Hi, this is Jeff Chandler. In this screencast, I'm going to talk about background operations on Android. This is an advanced topic. It is not something that we expect you to fully understand on this MP, but it's an important feature of working with Android and an important feature of building GUI-based applications in general. So here's how to think about this. Your application needs to be responsive. When the user pushes a button, something has to happen quickly so that the user knows that your app has received their input. Now, sometimes they did something wrong and you might just tell them you can't do that. Or sometimes they do something that's quick and so you just might make some small change to the UI or you know whatever that's fast. But there are other times when the thing that they're asking your application to do might take some time. So in this case, uh, for the app for MP4, there's a couple of slow operations. One of them is downloading uh, an image over the internet. So our application provides, you know, where did my emulator go? There it is. Application provides the ability to download uh, something from a file. And I would encourage you to use this. Uh, one of the things that you, know, you can do, let's see here, uh, open image a new tab. Um, so here's our here's our CS125 logo. You can actually paste URLs into Android Studio, uh, which is a pretty nice feature, if I remember correctly. I, I have to do it correctly. Uh, long press and then paste. Okay, hit okay. There's our logo, check that out. And we'll pretend that, um, you know, I guess this could be an alternate logo for the class. <laughs> All right, so, but that operation of downloading the photo is something that could take time. and so. If my program is sitting there waiting for that to complete and it's not listening to the new things that the user wants to do, it's not responding to the new things that the user is doing, the user is going to think that your app is broken. And it is broken because that's a very frustrating experience. So for example, if I asked, let's say I was, I was, I was on a really slow network and I downloaded a file and until the file completed, there was first of all no evidence that the file was being downloaded and none of the app worked. None of the buttons work, I can't get it to stop, I can't get it to do anything, um, then people are going to probably conclude that your app is broken, uninstall it, and give you a bad review. So how do we avoid that? So an Android um, has this uh, Android has this notion of what are called asynchronous tasks. So the idea is that um, what happens is the user initiates some action, and then I create an object that's actually going to perform that action, and that object runs in the background. So that object is now allowed to continue to run even while the foreground activity continues to respond to user events. And really what's going on is that we're starting to see that in certain cases on a computer system, there can be multiple things happening at once. And in fact, this is always the case. Um, but on Android, this is made fairly explicit. I have one thread or one part of my program that is continuously updating the UI and listening for the user to do things. When it needs to do something particularly slow, it creates something on Android that's called an asynchronous task or an async task right here, and tells that task to do this slow operation, and then it goes back to whatever it was doing before. Now, clearly one of the things I need here is I need a way for this slow operation to signal, to indicate to the rest of the app, hey, I'm done, I got the file, or I finished the Im image transformation. So there's two parts of this. There's sort of how we, or three parts really. There's how we start these tasks, what they do, and then how do they indicate to the rest of the application that they're finished. Okay, so we're in task.java and mp4, and there are two places in the app right now where we do a slow operation. One of them are these is a network request, and that's where we're downloading the uh, URL that you asked. And so let's, we, we can walk through that one, but I think the one that will probably be more useful to you to look at is the second one. So this is this image transformation task. And depending on how you implement these, your image transformations can be a little bit slow. And so one of the things we also do here, I'll show you, is you can see that while the image is being transformed, we have a spinner that's being shown. That's something uh, sometimes also known as throbbers. It's an indeterminate waiting indicator. It means I'm doing something, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but please wait for a minute. That's a good way to indicate to the user that there's a slow operation taking place 
um, and that they might you know, want to wait a second for it to complete. I'm sure you've seen many of these as you've used apps both on your smartphone and in other places. So let's walk through the flow of what happens from button click to creating this background task to the background task completing. So the button click is actually handled over here in my main activity. Um, and I'm gonna, let's, let's pick, I don't know, we could, we could pick any one of these, uh, but I'm gonna pick um, a left rotation. So when I push the left rotation button, the first thing that gets called is this function called start process image. So let's look for that guy, process image. That's actually used by all of these. And what start process image does, doesn't do a lot actually, um, it grabs the current bitmap that's sitting in the viewer. That's what I'm gonna transform. Actually, it only grabs the foreground part of it. It doesn't transform the background. And then here it creates a new task of type process image task. And it passes it this context, which is something that Android uses to, to track the relationship between things. And it passes it the string. So it basically says, here's the act, action that I want you to do. This is the constructor for my process image task class that I've defined in task.java. And then it executes it. Okay, and it, when it executes it, it passes it the bitmap. All right, so here's my constructor. My constructor takes a context and this string. It saves a copy of the string. I'm, I'm gonna gloss over pieces that aren't super important to, to what we're doing. Um, the asynchronous tasks in Android have several important methods. The first one is called on pre execute. This happens before the task runs, right when it starts. And what you see here is we actually use this as an opportunity to set this spinner. So we basically we set this visibility, um, we, we set a progress bar, and we make it visible. So that's that spinner that you see. So when the task starts, before we start the transformation, we start the spinner up. And then there's this uh, task at the end called on post execute that runs after this function gets called after that long task completes. And here we do the same thing, we, we, except we make the spinner invisible. This is also where we pass the result of the transformation back to the activity. So we call this function called activity set foreground bitmap. And that function is the one that's used by all the image transformations and in a variety of other places in the application. Let's see here, set foreground bitmap, here it is. That takes a new bitmap and it composites it on top of the background and redraws the display. So when I start the image transformation, I pass it the current bitmap, it runs for a little while, and then when it's finished, it passes me back the modified bitmap and then I redraw the display. So when I start, start the spinner, get the current bitmap, do some stuff to it, finish, end the spinner, hand the new bitmap back. The third function that I'm, is then this is something I have to provide as part of an async task, is this function called do in background. And that does pretty much exactly what you think. It performs a task in the background. Um, in this case, I have to pass it, uh, for some reason it will only accept arrays, so I pass it an array of uh, bitmaps. I grab uh, the bitmap I'm going to um, transform. And then I just have this sort of ugly case statement here that calls different functions on my transform class to actually do the transformation. So in the case of rotate left, now I'm gonna call transform rotate left. Um, and I'm going to use that to uh, convert the, uh, rotate the image to the left, right? So this calls, this, this is where we actually call into your code. There's two other things that happen here at the top and at the bottom, you see that we convert the bitmap into an array of RGBA pixels. That's so that your class can work properly. And at the end, we convert it back to a bitmap. That, those are not pieces of code that you need to look at, but you can, they're there. Um, so this is the general flow of a background task on Android. It gets started by an activity. So, and frequently it gets started in response to some sort of user action. So in this case, the user clicked a button. Um, I ran this short function here, start process image, that created my background task. Um, the background task also needs a way to signal usually to the foreground task that it's done. In this case, it does this by calling a function on the foreground task called set foreground bitmap that replaces the bitmap with the transformed image. So it's a very common design pattern on Android when I need to do something that is a little bit slow.